Um, so first off, let me thank you guys for taking aside this time because I know that you all are extremely busy. Uh, so I don't take your time and commitment for granted and I will try to be as thorough as possible. Um, so I don't want to rush through this, but at the same time, I know we're working with a limited time frame. So this particular workshop is going to help with assessment, but just overall engagement and sort of reinforcing a lot of the ideas that we've talked about over the course of the last year as it terms uh, in terms of creating consistent uh, formative assessment or consistent assessment and learning how to use that data to inform how we move forward as we teach. So I want to center this on an app called Quizzes because Quizzes I think will be extremely um, helpful for us because what Quizzes does is it takes a lot of the legwork out of us trying to create formative assessments or um, in-class assessments and the grading of the assessment. It takes a lot of the work off our shoulders and it also formulates the data that we can use as we try to move forward and continuously improve what we do in the context of our classrooms. So what is Quizzes? Quizzes is a learning platform um, that offers multiple tools to make classrooms fun, interactive, and engaging. So let me tell you how I learned about quizzes because a lot of times in college, we don't usually get to all the bells and whistles that they get to in high school. So during my time in high school, um, teaching and working within the high school public school system, we would have to a lot of times utilize a lot of these apps like quizzes and cahoots to make sure that we um, not only reiterated the things that we taught in class, but to strengthen a lot of the concepts that we taught in class, especially when you consider um, the fact that in high schools, you may have a classroom of 38, 40 students, which doesn't seem like a whole lot in college, but it's a whole lot in high school when you have those same five classes every day of 38 to 40 students. And so you have to find other tools and mechanisms to make sure that in addition to what you're doing in your classroom, that you find other things to strengthen their learning and to engage them in other ways. So this is how I learned about quizzes and Kahoot. So some of the features uh, from quizzes um, are as follows. There are instructor paced lessons. Uh, for example, let's say that Dr. Madsen decides to give a assessment on um, a chapter that she covered in class, right? And she wants to give an in-class assessment. Well, what she can do is she can set the pace of how quickly students, um, how quickly students can take this test. So she may say that um, students get 30 minutes to do this particular test, right? And so she times this particular test so that students can't go over 30 minutes. So even if they get done before 30 minutes, they have the opportunity to, to go back and look at the work, but they cannot go beyond 30 minutes. Second type of feature is that it has student-paced lessons. So again, remember I mentioned in the beginning that we have multi-levels of learners in our classrooms. And so a lot of times what these lessons, what can be done for these lessons is you can tailor it to fit those different uh, variations of learners that you have within your classrooms. Third, bring your own device. So a lot of times we get caught up in our classrooms when students, they forget their, la their laptop, their MacBook or whatever their assigned device is. Well, with quizzes, they can do it from their phone. So they have no excuse uh, about not doing the work and not doing the assessment. Fourth, you have access to millions of quizzes. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel. So if Dr. Farrell is teaching, uh, Dr. Farrell, give me an example of a, of a lesson you teach in your class. Um, drawing Lewis structures. I have no idea what that is, but I'm gonna play along. So let's say when Dr. Farrell is teaching drawing Lewis structures in his class, right? He doesn't have to necessarily make a quiz uh, or an assessment for those students if he can find, because all he has to do is to use the search icon on the Quizzes app to see if there's already 
a particular quiz that is in league with what he's teaching in the context of his classroom. Last one, quiz lesson editor is a fifth component. And what happens with that is if we go back to the fourth one where Dr. Farrell has found the quiz that he thinks um, is in league what he's been teaching in the last couple of courses and he wants to assess his students over it, but he sees a few missing items, a few things that he thinks uh, are central to what he's been teaching, he, he can edit that quiz. So he can use the old quiz, but add his own variations to it so that it is specific to his student clientele. Easy data collection. Now this is what I get excited about, right? So what happens is, is not only does quizzes grade the assessment for us, and we thank God for that because Many of us uh, would probably teach for free if we didn't have to grade papers. So what happens is, is that quiz is not only grades the assessments that you give, but you also are able to look at the data to see where it is that your students struggles, struggled in certain areas and where they glowed in other areas. So it gives you a better idea of what areas need to be strengthened and what areas they're strong in that you may want to capitalize on a little bit more. And it compiles those, uh, it compiles that data in a report. And how it can help in terms of your program or your department is that you can share your data and collaborate with other teachers who might teach the exact same subject area so that you all can make sure that your assessment is, is meeting the same mark that you are really, really uh, meeting those student learning outcomes or those strategic goals that are set forth by your program or department. How to use quizzes. So step one, when we're using quizzes is we wanna make sure that we select what type of quiz we're gonna use, edit the quiz if it's not uh, specifically to our liking, or if we don't want to use anything that we found, we can create our own quiz. Step two, we use the search bar and we type in what specifically we want to use and we duplicate it. And so because I'm a hands-on person, I'd like to show you exactly what, uh, what I mean. So I want to show you an example of what that looks like. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna log into my quizzes account to show you how this works uh, in your benefit. Well, I'm already logged in, okay. <laughs> so let's say um, that I am teaching about, I'm in the humanities department, I'm in a general ed, I'm in a college composition instructor, and I'm teaching about the research paper process. So so I'm going to see if I can find an assessment that really, really goes over the tenets of the research paper process. And also notice here that the lessons are categorized in terms of grade level, right? So if you go up and is it everybody, can everybody see this? Okay. So if you click on the all grades, you see it has elementary, middle school, high school, university. So let's say I click on university. And here it says that there are no um, university quizzes here, right? So I can either create a quiz or create a lesson. In my case, I might use high school, right? But I'm going to make sure I use 12th grade, something from ninth to 12th grade about the research paper or research plan process.
So right here, we see that I've chosen research paper styles and purposes. So this would be like a formative assessment to make sure that when we talked about what a research paper is and what types of documentation have, uh, need to be used when you're doing a research paper, I can use a quiz like this and I can also tailor it to make sure that it fits my students and the specific things that I've talked about in class. So let's say I see that most of these are true false questions. There are a couple of multiple choice, right? And it talks about a lot of the things I've talked about in class, but there is about two or three things that I don't see on here, right? Because I did in the long, uh, with teaching about the research paper process, one of the things I've taught my students about was uh, creating an annotated bibliography as part of the research paper process. So I may want to add a couple of questions in here about the annotated bibliography. So in order to do so, all I have to do is click the button that says copy and edit. So now what it did for me is it duplicated that assessment. So it's the exact same assessment, but I can add a question by clicking new question. I can also decide what sort of question I want it to be. So I think I'm going to do um, match, right? No, not match, multiple choice. Okay, so now I have my new quiz and it has 11 questions. And so what happens is what makes this so awesome is I'm gonna give you an example of what this looks like when we actually give the quiz to our students. So if I wanted to give this quiz in my class during, during the class um, as a formative assessment, I would do start a live quiz. Now, when I do that, if I do classic, that means that uh, I will have a leaderboard up and the students will be able to see their live results, like who's in first, who's getting the most right, or who's getting the most wrong. It won't tell their full name unless they put their name. They can use a name, um, a nickname, but you'll know what their real names are because you'll have them listed in quizzes. Or I can do an instructor paced quiz, which means that I set the time frame uh, for which the students can answer the questions. And so since we're working with a limited time in class and I don't wanna take the whole class period for them to do this assessment, I might set about 15 minutes for them to do this. And so this is how they would join. So I could either post this on my board 
or when I what I do is I could share this via a text and they join into the quizzes and we all start at the same time. And because I have them on a time limit, I told them that you only have 15 minutes. At 15 minutes, I can end the session. And it automatically populates the data for me. And the students don't necessarily see the data. They'll see the grades that they made. But at the end, what I get to do is I get to see an Excel sheet that tells me how they perform in the, in the areas that they struggled the most. Do I have any questions or any concerns so far? Okay, so let me go back. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, does the does Cheney have to purchase um, a license to use this, or does do we as faculty do the students? No, a quiz is we can use the free version. Now, if Cheney, if we wanted to use uh, some of the more in depth tools that are on the on the specific site, we would have to purchase it. But for the most part, it's free for educators. Free for educators and free for our students. So the but of students course, as you know, always there's always a basic plan and a premium plan. So if we're just going to use the basic plan, it's free. And there is no um, license infringement for us using it. But if we wanted the premium plan, that would allow us to have uh, access to some of the more um, more specific things, then we would have to, we probably would have to pay for the program. Okay, and the students could then, that they don't have to purchase. No, they don't have to purchase. You just have to assign it to them and give them the code so that they can log in. So in order for, um, you know, and we want to use this because this really helps us in terms of having consistent, uh, consistent assessment, right? For us to be able to gauge uh, how our students are doing, but it also is an opportunity to improve engagement because we know that a lot of times, a lot of the students that we have are very much technologically driven, right? And so things like uh, quizzes and another app that I'll show you all later on, uh, not in this presentation, but another one called Kahoot is very good. Hello? Uh, it's very good at keeping up that engagement component. It's very engaging because it's very colorful. Um, you can even add videos and other images within the context of your uh, assessment. And so a lot of students like it because instead of us having to teach it verbatim in a lecture series, here's something that's very much akin to something that they may see on social media. So some good opportunities to use uh, quizzes would be before the lesson. So let's say that you taught something um, la and last week you went over, last week in your class, you went over a specific chapter and you're trying to make sure the students really, really understand what it is that you were teaching. So before the lesson, you could do a five minute opener, five, 10 minute opener tops. And that opener could be your formative assessment where you're simply giving them a quick assessment to see that they really understand the chapter or whatever concept that you covered in the class before or during uh, or the week before. Another good time to use quizzes would be during the lesson. So let's say you're teaching a pretty challenging concept. Excuse me. Um, for example, one thing that uh, students um, used to really have a hard time understanding when I was teaching college composition and especially during the research paper process, a lot of times students would have um, a little bit of difficulty understanding logical fallacies. And so for my non-English major folk, let me tell you what a logical fallacy is. So a logical fallacy is something we see our students use all the time. It is a, a statement or a, some sort of evidence that they use that it, it sounds good, but it really doesn't hold any particular weight, right? It's a fallacy, it's a falsehood. Um, and so the different types of logical fallacies, I will always teach them those because a lot of times I would see those mistakes consistently being made 
not only in the research paper writing process, but overall in the essay writing process. So in the middle of the lesson, I might say, okay, everybody stop. I'm gonna take a quick quiz over uh, five types of logical fallacies, right? And uh, we're gonna specifically look at um, overgeneralization, the logical fallacy called overgeneralization. And I, 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 I honed in on overgeneralization because for me, that is a common error that I saw with the majority of the students, uh, the fallacy of overgeneralization. So I may give them a series of statements and say, um, this, this statement is a red herring, right? And a red herring is uh, that type of fallacy, if I'm not mistaken, it's been so long since I've taught English, but um, a red herring is like something that distracts people, right? It's like throwing something in an argument um, that distracts people from the original argument. And so let's say that I had a, a series of statements and I might have multiple choice for them to be able to identify which type of fallacy it is, but I specifically hone in on overgeneralization. So I may give them between five to 10 multiple choice questions and give them about five to seven minutes to finish this. A closing lesson. A closing lesson is really good because now what you're doing is you're able to assess, did they really comprehend, uh, did they really understand what it is that you taught during your lecture? And again, these things don't have to be anything long and drawn out. They could be the last five minutes in your class. And we know that consistency is what builds success. So after so long, students know, I know that, um, I know that Dr. Hall is going to give this closing quizzes at the end of class in five minutes and I got to get this thing done. And so, with that consistency, and they know that this is something that happens at the end of class, what that does is that tra that helps them to, to, to know and expect what's to come, but it also gets them prepared because they understand that these lessons are part of their grade. And they don't necessarily have to be a huge part of their grade. They could be a part of their class participation grade. You can use them for extra credit. Um, you may even want to use them to sort of close some gaps when you see a student that is consistently struggling because I use homework, uh, even though students tend to think that homework is punishment, I like to use the homework to basically reinforce whatever the lesson is that I taught in class. So I want to make sure that I'm assessing how much they understood because again, the overall objective is to help us understand the areas that need to be uh, uh, strengthened in our pedagogy and how we can address some of those areas. So before the lesson, depending on your subject area, the class kickoff activity has can have many names. You can call it a do now, you can call it a warm up, you can call it an opening exercise, right? Whatever you call it, then when you need to make it a consistent part of your class, even if it's once a week, it needs to happen every week. This, this particular sort of assessment needs to happen every week because it needs to be consistently done. During the lesson, after you start class um, and you're in the middle of the lesson and you decide to give a quick quiz is, this really does help you understand or uh, where it is that your students are as you're teaching a particular concept. And so what happens is, you know, a lot of times we'll explain the concept and we'll keep going because we think that they understood. So we keep moving forward. And what it really is doing is it's causing them to be further behind because they didn't understand the first thing that you taught. So this gives you an opportunity to check for understanding while you're teaching. After the lesson, just a mini quiz to make sure that they understood. And I'm gonna skip ahead quickly. And so these are a couple of other reasons why you might wanna use quick quizzes. You can use it as a study resource. Um, you can use it to follow up on some assignments. 
And one of the things, and let me say this to you too, because I think this is extremely helpful to know. A lot of times our concern uh, when using an app like this or using some, something like this, a lot of times we're um, kind of concerned about um, the occurrence of cheating. But one of the great things about quiz is, is that you can scramble the responses. You can make sure that the, res the, uh, the responses are scrambled. So even though all students are being asked the same questions, students don't know what order the questions are that they're receiving. So they can't really cheat off each other because the responses have, it may be different questions at different times. Next type of reason that you can use quiz is, is you can use it for test preparation. You know, a lot of times students ask us, well, Dr. So-and-so, do you have a study guide that I can use? Is it possible that you can make a study guide for us? Well, most of us don't really have time to make a full-fledged study guide, and uh, especially at midterm and final and some, for some of the other larger exams. So quizzes helps to alleviate this. So all that we, can, uh, all that we really have to do is we can populate uh, just like I showed you in the beginning, how we can create a quiz and we can look at old other quizzes that have been done before and just simply tailor them to fit whatever it is that we're teaching, or we can populate it with some of the information that we've taught in class and just put it in question form to make sure that students have something to cover. Last, you can use it for many lessons where uh, it captures the essence of what it is you're teaching in class. And so to, lit to solidify um, what I'm showing you, I want everybody, we're gonna do a quick quizzes of our own, if you don't mind. All right, boys and girls, I'm pretending you, you all in my class and I'm a teacher, okay? If you didn't notice, I, I love playing school when I was little. That was one of my favorite uh, playtime activities. So I'm going to give you um, a quick quiz is, and I'm going to put it on the screen. Everybody hopefully can see it. So as soon as everybody logs in, you can use this code on your screen. Just go to joinmyquizzes.com. And as soon as you all um, log in, because it'll ask you for this code after you go to joinmyquizzes.com, it'll ask you for that code. As soon as everybody logs in, I'll go ahead and get started. And I'm going to give you, shouldn't take you any more than two minutes to go ahead and log in. Got 45 more seconds, 45 more seconds. Dr. Hall. Yes, ma'am. I don't know where to log into. Go to joinmyquizzes.com. I just hit that. Go to joinmyquizzes.com and then it's gonna ask you for a code and you type that code. Do I have to open up a new screen to do that? You're gonna to have to open up a new tab, yeah. 
Okay, so I if I do that, I'm going to lose you. So I don't know how to do it. My do you sister, have your phone? Do you have access to your phone? All right. So I have to put it in there. All right. Now, there should be a lot more than two people. We've got six other participants. So come on, folks, sign in and sign up. Okay. I'm pretty, but taking I know you me, didn't come to look at my face. It's so taking me to Cheney's internet, and that's it. When I go on the fan. Mine took, okay. me, mine took me to a malware warning. Yeah, it's okay. not taking me to where you want me to go. Okay, let me show you another example. Hold on one second. Okay, it just did now. All right. Mine, mine is blo it's blocked for me. It says that. Okay. Yeah, I got to the malware warning one as well. That I, I mistyped it the first time. Um, okay. Okay, if you go to your, um, if you go to the search bar and you do joinmyquizzes.com, it should take you immediately to the site and that's where you type in the code. Um. All right, I got in. Okay. Well, I got in now, but I lost the, the information. I'll put the information back up on the screen so okay, you can type you. in the code. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, oh. Ooh. I don't play games ever online. So this is like really bizarre. I think it's the first time I'm doing a game thing. It's like a game. It, it really is, but the kids really enjoy it and it really is a great learning tool. Okay, so I'm- Oh, I agree. Ahead. I have to learn too. Let me go ahead and start. And you guys have seven minutes. Um. Question five keeps giving me an error. Every time I answer it correctly. Thank you. 
Yeah, has anyone ever, has anyone been able to get past question six? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I keep getting, uh oh, quiz ran into an error. We're unable to save your responses. Please try again. And it keeps asking me to enter my code again. Could be my office. Okay, I know you guys probably didn't have time to finish, but I just wanted you to get a feel for how it works. And I'm going to show you, um, you see how you see how it showed you like who was in first place, who was in second place, who was in third place. When I tell you guys that even college students get a kick out of that, right? Because then it starts to feel like a game for them, right? And they get, and believe it or not, they get extremely competitive about, about these assessments. So the other wonderful part, right? When we talk about data, I want you to look at this, right? And so when you're looking at this, you see how it shows you um, the green, of course, means that, that you got it correct. And the red uh, means, of course, that you got it wrong. So what this gives you the chance to do is to, it gives you the chance to see the areas where your students are struggling the most. And so when you start looking at this, so let's say, for instance, if I had more students that struggled on question uh, question is three, and I'm gonna make up another one. Um, a lot of students struggled on question three, and the majority of students didn't make it past question eight. Then what I know is is that I know that with question number three, let me go back and see what that one was. Summative assessment, I need to cover that a little bit more. I need to do a little bit, look a little bit more explaining what a summative assessment is and making sure that students understand that. And I also may just wanna go back over the material in general because we can see that it took students uh, longer than it should have to answer these particular questions. And so that gives me a gauge of some things that I need to do when it, in terms of a recovering information for my students. And so what I think you guys can do is, um, you know, I'm going to give you instructions when I send you the PowerPoint for this particular presentation. I'm also going to, uh, it's on there, the instructions that are necessary for you to be able to log on to Quizzes and create your own account. And whenever you get a moment, just play around with it. Play around with it and tailor it to your liking to make sure, you know, see if you can find some quiz, uh, quizzes that you might want to use. Um, and see, you might want to see if you if you know how to tailor the quiz. And so I know we went through the information really fast, but I understand that number one, you guys are working on a limited time frame. But I wanted to make sure I covered as much as possible to kind of show you that it is really, really a very doable thing and will help you in terms of your assessment methods and your strategy and to take some of the weight off your shoulders 
in doing the assessment and doing the grading of the work. So um, do I have any questions before I let you all go? Any questions, any concerns? Is there any mechanism to um, make it so the students don't, you know, use some online resource while they're taking the quiz? Or is this meant to be like an in-class thing or? Now, um, like I said before, Dr. Farrell, you can have the questions switch up. Like, let's say, for instance, if you give it to them for homework and you make sure that they don't cheat off each other. But I, but as for them Googling the answers, that I can't stop, right? Okay, gotcha. Um, but I, I wish that I could, Dr. Farrell. I, I tell you what, because I'm, I'm a stickler about cheating. And I'm always like, mm, are y'all, and I walk around the room just to make sure they're not looking at something else. So I will do some research and see, is there any way to like do a pop-up block so that they can't open any other windows while their own quiz is. So I'll do some research and get back to you, but I'm going to send you all the presentation and it will tell you how to log in, set up your account, and also how to find um, quizzes in your area if we didn't do enough to cover it today. But I thank you all for your time and your attention. If you have any additional questions, feel free to email me. Okay, have a wonderful day, everybody.